Welcome to another thrilling episode of ATG Sports Plus. I'm your host, Zach Haiku, and with me today, the wonderful Kat. Hi, everyone. I am Catherine Llewellyn, and it's great to be here, Zach. It's always a pleasure, Kat. On today's menu of electrifying highlights, the SRL Premier Series dazzled at Dawson Glen with number 42, Jesus Crisp, clinching the top spot. Quite the race, wasn't it? Absolutely, Zach. The energy on the track was palatable. And speaking of updates, the virtual greens are buzzing with excitement as Lunacia unveils version 3.12 of the renowned golf scoring system. Oh, I've heard about that. For all the golf enthusiasts, this is a significant leap. And for our racing aficionados, you should definitely mark your calendars. That's right, the High Octane Grand Prix 3 test event and mini challenge is set to take place at the famed Tokyo LC racing circuits. It's going to be a spectacle. Without a doubt, Kat, without a doubt. So folks, hold on to your seats as we delve into these stories and more, ensuring your sports adrenaline stays at its peak. In the exhilarating race at Dawson Glen for the SRL Premier Series on Sunday, August 6th, we witnessed some incredible performances. Taking the lead, we had number 42, Jesus Crisp, who stormed to a triumphant victory. Yeah, that was something, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely, Zach. Crispy was in top form. And closely tailing him was 07, Donovan Michalski, securing the second spot. With number 9, Morticia Velada, right behind, clinching third. The competition was fierce. And speaking of fierce, number 18, Taylor Arallo, wasn't far behind, locking in at fourth. But the surprise of the race, at least for me, was number 85, Katya Lovka. Not only did she finish in the fifth spot, but she also took home the title of Rookie of the Race. Absolutely deserved. She's one to watch out for. Rounding out the top spots, we had number 39, Raylan Rain in the sixth, following the ever-talented number one, Kathleen Spitfire, in the seventh. And number 10, Becky Acker, securing the 8th position. Positions 9 through 14 were nothing short of intense. We had number 43, R.D. Lagan. Number 48, Romeo Highwater. Number 2, Yar Stephanopoulos. Number 71, Pody Sika. Number 31, Diane Fox. And number 0, Christina Kurtow. Each racer giving it their all. Absolutely, but there's a notable mention, Zach. Due to the disqualification of number 14, there will be no pole or fastest lap awards presented this time around. That's right, Kat. It's always essential to remember the rules and regulations in such tight competitions. Well, folks, that wraps up our update of the SRL Premier Series. Stay tuned for more thrilling updates as the series progresses. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fan of high-speed action, boy, do we have a treat for you. Get ready for the Grand Prix 3 test event and mini challenge. Kat, when's this event taking place? <laughs> Zach, raving enthusiasts better clear their schedules for Sunday, August the 13th at 11 a.m. SLT time. If you're wondering where this action is going down, it's the famed Tokyo LC Racing Circuit. Need directions? Well, here's a link to set you on the right track. Fantastic, Kat. Now, for all our gearheads out there, Let's dive into the machinery. Participants will be showcasing their skills in not one, but two distinct cars. Tell us more, Kat. That's right. Racers will be getting behind the wheel of GP3 version 0.5 and version 0.6. And the mini challenge will be version 1.0. And Zach, guess what? Here's some turbocharged news for all the participants. Both these cars will be available for free at the track. Wait, free cars? Now that's a deal that's hard to pass up. And how's the race format looking? <laughs> it's designed to keep everyone on their toes. Competitors will be tackling two six-lap races for the GP3. Then they'll switch gears for the mini challenge with a two five-lap duel. The starting grid will be the first race of each car is wide open, meaning racers can pick their spots without any qualifying rounds or cues. And what about the second race? I heard there's a twist. There sure is. For Pulse Racing second race, things will get mixed up. Starting positions will be determined by reverse order of finishing the initial races. It's going to be a game changer for sure. That sounds like an absolute spectacle. Racing fans, you've heard it here first. Mark those calendars and brace yourselves for a high-speed extravaganza.
Race enthusiasts, if you thought last week was intense, just wait till you hear about the showdown at Comets Universe from the SRL Indie Pro Series. Taking place on August 7, it was a spectacle like no other. Kat, who clinched the top spot? Zach, none other than the one and only Luke Carmona, who zoomed a victory on that Monday night. And he was tough competition with Morticia Villada chasing him down to finish in second. And Kathleen Spitfire impressively taking third spot. I've been hearing a lot about the top 10 action. Well, it was a nail-biter, I can tell you. Donovan Michalski, who started the race from pole position, fought hard and managed a fourth-place finish. Following close were Valkyrie in fifth, Taylor Ayrallo, Becky Acker, Romeo Highwater, Raylan Rain, and rounding out the top 10 was Emmy Blueberry. And beyond the top 10... The race was equally thrilling from 11th through 18th. Drivers pushing the limits were Candy Tomorrow, Christina Kurtau, Goddess Resident, Ubrian Viper, Yar Stephanopoulos, Nika Carter, Diana Fox, and Puetuk. The fight for positions was fierce. And I believe there was a special mention for Luke Carmona. Yes, indeed. Apart from taking the home win, Luke Carmona also set the track ablaze by cinching the fastest lap. Double accolades for him. What a performance. Wow. Now, looking ahead, where's our next racing destination? Race fans, get ready, because next week we're burning rubber at the Winterfell Motor Speedway. It promises to be another edge-of-the-seat event. Well, I can't wait for that. Stay in the fast lane, folks, and stay tuned for more high-octane updates from the world of racing. Golf enthusiasts, it's time again that we delve into updates from the virtual greens. Zach, what's the latest from Lunacy and their renowned golf scoring system? At Lunacy is back at it with the launch of version 3.12 of the golf system by C3, the score system. This update brings some much-needed fixes, especially addressing those ball detection glitches. And guess what? These glitches emerged from the July modifications to the Second Life region servers. And so it's a response to those pesky issues. But I heard there's more than just fixes in this update. Absolutely. The cherry on top? The system now boasts enhanced anti-cheat features, ensuring everyone gets a fair shot, quite literally, in the virtual golf environment. Fantastic! I've also caught wind of some compatibility concerns with the True Golf Club system. Fill us in on that. That's right, Kat. For those who swear by the True Golf Club system, you might want to listen up. There have been compatibility issues noted, specifically with version 3.09 and above of the scoring system. But the silver lining? Both Lunacy and the True Golf team are actively collaborating to iron out these glitches. And the end goal? Well, they're aiming for a seamless integration that doesn't compromise on the anti-cheat measures. Both entities are committed to delivering a unified, fair, and immersive virtual golf experience for everyone. That's what we love to hear. It's all about ensuring a level playing field, or shall I say, golf course, for all. All right, wrestling enthusiasts, buckle up. We've got a jam-packed week of Second Life Wrestling events coming your way. Catherine, can we get a rundown? Absolutely, Zach. On Sunday, we're starting strong with OEW Ascension at 10 a.m. SLT at Takeda Bay. We got Volcano squaring off against Alexia. Girinezu Ozul taking the ring against Hiroto Katsu. And Champion vs. Champion match that has me on the edge of my seat. Skillix vs. Johnny Angel. But wait, there is a twist in the tail, isn't there? Right you are. You might see Daisy Sue respond to Karen's challenge. Plus, fans are eagerly waiting the comeback of Cesspool featuring Paul Slater. Later in the day, Rise Global Tour is lighting up the Go Arena at 1 p.m. SLT. Yeah, I've heard that we've got a spicy chat between Rise Man's champion and Justin Sane on the cards, ending with a match between Justin and Jordan Hilfiger. But the action doesn't stop there, does it? Oh, it just keeps rolling. Sunday continues with Honor Pro Wrestling, Infinity at Hurricane, <laughs> VWE's Sunday Night Evening at Grapple City Arena, and PWGP's Dream at Saitama Arena, and we wrap up the day at UFW's Frontline at Furzona. Whew, that's just Sunday. 
Let's dive into Monday. We've got Premier Wrestling Attitude taking over Lionheart Coliseum at 1 p.m. Second Life Time. And later, UFW Unbroken heats up for Zona at 5 p.m. Second Life Time. Tuesday? Tuesday, we have BCW's Battle Zone is the talk of the town. 3 p.m. Second Life Time Sharp at the Old Mill. And Wednesday, fans should brace themselves for Rise at Chamonix Arena and then Valiant Wrestling at Flashpoint at the Surge Stadium. Thursday promises more adrenaline with Premier Wrestling Overload at, at Lionheart Coliseum. Can't forget Friday's action at DCWF Slam City in Little Italy. VWE Friday Night Defiance at Grappital CD Arena and UFW Nightfall at Furzona. And finally, Saturday serves up a triple threat. PWGP Risen and Premier Unplugged at noon at Saitama Arena and Pink Moon Estates. Elite Angel Wrestling in the afternoon. And we wrap up the week with WPWF Asylum at Sky High Arena. Talk about a packed schedule. Fans, brace yourselves for a roller coaster of a week and get your calendars marked and be ready for the whirlwind of battles and drama. Wrestling fans, if you thought you knew excitement, then last week's Second Life Virtual Wrestling would have surely given you a fresh perspective. I mean, talk about some electrifying bouts. Catherine, are you ready to jump into some into the action? Always, Zach. Wrestling's been nothing short of theatrical, and I can't wait to dive into the highlights. Let's get started. Picking things off with DAW Amplify, post-SL Fandom Con, the scene was set for some riveting drama. Catherine, what went down in the new area city? Well, Zach, we saw the grand unveiling of Refresh DAW Battlements, and what a kickoff! The Pharaoh went head to head with Red Empress, and while Pharaoh tried to duck out early, Red Empress was having none of it and took control. Red Empress wasn't only dominating in the ring, but outside as well, right? Absolutely, Zach. She threw down the gauntlet, challenging Sasha Winters and Vivian for a medley. Overdrive mixed down. The night was getting started. Alex Morales and Angel, the duel was to remember. And a controversial ending to that one. Oh, for sure. Angel let his frustration get the best of him, and well... Striking a ref? That's a big no-no. He got disqualified, leaving Morales absolutely furious. And as for the main event, Red Umbra versus Falami? Need I say more? What about? Red Umbra's stardust press from the battlement stairs was the stuff of legends. Folks, DAW is setting the wrestling world on fire. Over at WPWF Asylum Front... August 12th was one for the books. Koi Kiyori got things going, taking down Soledad. But Zack, things heated up during a particular contract signing, didn't they? They sure did. Austin Knight, Kimberly Smith, and Karma Star were all set for their upcoming Ragnarok match. But a surprise interruption by Mazra Baxton? That was unexpected. And Knight's warning? Chills, Cat. Chills. The matches were non-stop. Marcel over Foxy, Kendoya's victory, which got a bit controversial. And oh boy, the title clash teaser between Carter and Kendoya can't wait. In the main event, Catherine, Hisatsu dominating both the Kraken, Gup Yuda, and Escarlata. And speaking of Escarlata, her challenge to Chiyoko for Ragnarok, that's going to be an epic showdown. Absolutely, Zach. The wrestling ring is just ablaze with action and drama. Fans, you better not blink, or you could miss something epic. Indeed, Kat. Wrestling last week was off the charts. We can't wait for what's next. Everyone, stay tuned for more exhilarating action and drama right here. Big news coming out of the Second Life Cycling Federation today. They made a significant leap in the technology department. Haven't they, Catherine? Absolutely, Zach. They introduced an all-seeing eye at the race events. Embedded at the starting line, this device doesn't miss a beat. It's designed to capture the unique identifier or UUID of each bike and its rider, tracking them throughout the race. Now that's intense. This is just about monitoring direction and speed, is it? No, it's much more intricate. This system monitors the location, direction, and speed, and 
only within the SLC of zones. All this data is then cross-referenced against known performance standards, helping identify any inconsistencies. So, this is essentially aimed at curbing those speed-boosting tricks some racers might employ, right? Exactly. The introduction of the eye is a strong message to all participants, emphasizing the importance of fair play. It's an action step to ensure transparency and put a halt on any potential unfair advantages. It's clear that the SLCF is seriously committed to both the fun and fairness aspects of the sport. A bold move indeed. Absolutely. Riders should keep in mind the eye is always watching, but it's all for the better, offering a more genuine and thrilling race experience for everyone involved. Stay fair, riders. Zach, have you caught up with the exhilarating race at Breakaway Tracks Alpine Route this past Saturday? Oh, Catherine, it was something else. Hosted by the Second Life Cycling Federation on August 12th, the countryside-themed course designed by Meika was nothing short of captivating. Can you believe the track even had fluffy sheep and a tractor? That's incredible attention to detail. I heard it was quite the turnout. Absolutely. A substantial number of participants showed up, making the competition all the more fierce. They underwent two intense qualifiers, and only the top five riders from each made it to the grand finale. Speaking of which, massive congratulations are in order to Nikutsi resident. Taking the top spot is no small feat, especially with such a tough competition. For real, following closely behind Nikutsi were Matisha Vilota in second and Sean Carlucci grabbing the third spot. Valk Rain, Amy Blueberry, and several others also put up a, th a tough fight, landing within the top nine. It's worth noting that this trio, Nikutsi, Morticia, and Sean, showed incredible consistency. They dominated not only the race, but also the leaderboard for the fastest lap of the week. Indeed, Catherine, the atmosphere was electric, especially with the qualifiers stretching over two laps and the grand finale being a heart-pounding five-lap race. Sagging enthusiasts surely had a treat. It's clear that SLCF Alpine races are shaping up to be events no one wants to miss. Look forward to the next one. And that wraps up another episode of ATG Sports Plus. From the peaks to the valleys, we've brought you every electrifying moment. Couldn't have said it better, Zach. It's always a roller coaster ride in the world of virtual sports, isn't it? If it really is, Catherine. Whether you're on the sidelines or right in the thick of it, the excitement never stops. So true. And for everybody out there, remember, always keep the ball rolling on the virtual field. Um.